Yes. Mm-hmm. No, I can't. I mean, with all of these, I can't really. Um, Fraggle Rock is it's in script development um, with a lot of enthusiasm, um, but it's still really in in script development. Um, and then, I mean, the other one, because people will ask, is Farscape is also in script development. Um, these are all projects that are uh, important to us, and because they're important, sometimes they take a long time to get them right. Can I can I ask at least uh, with Fraggle Rock the decision to to try and do it as a film as opposed to reviving a series? Uh, why? Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, well, that one was more, hmm, I don't know that I have a good answer to that. Other than I have a sister, and it, the, she and I make, make a lot of these kind of decisions. And, and that one, I think she was more enthusiastic about making as a movie. Um, but yes, you could definitely go either way. And I think the idea with, I think the idea with all of these, and, but you know, there I am, I want to make a movie of Farscape, but you could, there's definitely a lot of people who would like to see it come back as a see next generation series. Um, sometimes it just feels like the right thing. If it was a very successful TV show, wouldn't it be nice to do it as a movie, as, the, as, as a splashy way to revisit that world? Yeah, I mean, it just seems like we're, we're suddenly in an era where the you know, shows are, are sort of coming back from from after you know decades in some cases like they're talking about doing a new Twin Peaks you know hey, wait you haven't heard this <laughs> let's talk afterwards uh, <laughs> uh, but you know like Arrested Development just shows that that you know have been have been off for a while com- coming back it's just it's interesting uh, I think an interesting time where where there are now people that are willing to do that Obviously, you know, someone like Fraggle Rock would, I'm sure, be very attractive to a lot of networks. But. Well, I can tell you we don't like remakes. So nothing we will do will be a remake right now. Of course, I'll say that, and then in five years we'll do a remake of something. But um, it's, that's not the way we think. So I don't, whereas everybody's doing remakes. I was amazed that George Miller did a remake of Mad Max, but I, the trailer looks fantastic. So it's probably, it's probably great. But... Um, yeah, it's not usually what we do. So what what you'll see with us are uh, continuing stories or, or sequels or prequels. Yes? I'm, I'm curious. Like, we see a lot of generations here right now. Last year I saw Toby's son Sebastian in the striped outfit. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. yeah. The exact age. <laughs> walking around. It's so cute. Um, who do you feel like you are in terms of, of what you're going to add to the Henson legacy and, and what do you hope? I have no idea. Oh, I can. I don't know what I. I have no idea what I had. I. I don't know. I just do whatever I can do. Um, I jump around, as you know. I'll. I'll do preschool television, and I'll do a movie, and then I'll do something, and then I do puppet. I'll do you know, improv, X-rated puppet shows. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But I, I, and I like to sort of bounce around. So I'll just be whatever I am, and somebody else will decide what I was. Um, f- as for the, 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 the legacy, the, Jim, and the legacy of Jim Henson is, um, should be something that's unpredictable. It should be predictably unpredictable. Because my dad is the guy, Muppet Show, I remember, was the number one show in the world. And not only was it the number one show in the world, it was like in 150 countries or something. Something like I'm not know if I'm, I don't know if I'm getting these numbers of countries right. When the last most the the previous most successful TV show had gone to 30 countries, and the Muppet Show was playing in like 150, and it was it held that spot for like three months, and then Dallas went ahead, which is horrifying. <laughs> that <laughs> that Dallas would have made it in more. But um, my dad made five seasons. And and while the show was that valuable and that popular, he said, "No, I got to stop and do something new." And 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 with Sesame Street, he only stayed with Sesame Street for the first three to four years. I don't really know, but he did in those first years. He did all the animated shorts. He did all the puppets. He did everything. And then he he moved on. He would come back and do some shooting with them, but. Um, but he he always needed to move, and he always needed to do something fresh. 
and he always wanted it to be innovative. And even if you could do Hoggle with cables, let's do it wireless, let's use motors, let's, even though we could do an owl with, that's a puppet, let's try the CG. Um, he always wanted the, to try new things and, and innovate and innovate technically and, and technologically and artistically and don't copy himself and, and, and tr you know, try to be genuine and try to do something fresh and fail by all means because if you failed if you failed with conviction that's almost as successful as succeeding with conviction so um, you know that's what I I would hope our legacy is that we can remain creatively daring it's hard because in the 70s it was easier for my father to be creatively daring it was a much more accepted thing than the, actually now it's starting to be creatively daring again but we've come out of a, a period of time where it was very hard um, but that's what I hope uh, the legacy of, of Jim Henson is that we will continue to be sort of boldly innovative and creative and and then the overall effect even though I'm doing puppet up uncensored is that we hope to leave the world a better place get people to out of themselves and to think about themselves and to reflect upon themselves um, Many themes of my father's saying you'll find there aren't many families in in our pieces. I guess nowadays a little bit more, but my dad almost never did the nuclear family. He was he was always about families that came together because they were so different and and because they were so so um, well, exotic to each other, that they, they were so different, and then forming your own family. And I think for him, that was sort of the key to world peace. I mean, to him, he would he talked, he thought if you can take that philosophy, and that you should be attracted to and want to get to know and want to get to connect with the person most different from you, and if you can do that in a small way, and if it can impact and, and make more people do that, more people do that, then at the end of the day you have world peace. That was sort of, you know, I think he honestly believed that. And I, and I, and I believe that that should be true. But anyway. <laughs>